Uh, buenos dias, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to speak in English uh, because I don't want to dishonor your language with my attempt. Uh, but the, uh, your governor has done much better in English, uh, uh, and it's been a pleasure to watch him progress. Uh, we are all very excited to be here. Uh, I have a beautiful relationship with your governor, and we've done a lot of good work together, and we've uh, had a little fun at it also. When he comes to New York, we have so much fun, we get into a little trouble, you know, because they expect when you have two governors together that you're going to be very serious and it's going to be your work. Uh, but as you know, and as uh, New York and, and uh, the rest of the country is learning, uh, this is really an extraordinary town uh, in Governor Alejandro Garcia Padilla. He is, uh, he is talented, he is skilled, he is authentic, he does everything for the right reason. Uh, and that's why it's my honor as his colleague to be here today to work with him. And let's give him a round of applause for his beautiful work. I want to thank the governor for his hospitality. We had a beautiful dinner and meeting yesterday. Uh, I had the great uh, pleasure of being able to stay in uh, Fortaleza last night. Uh, I want him to know on a personal level I am very jealous that he has a Fortaleza and I do not have a Fortaleza. Uh, luckily, there are members of my legislature who are here today. Uh, I hope they were moved by the impact of Fortaleza and don't want to see their governor embarrassed. And therefore, when we get back to New York, I'm sure they're going to acquire a residence for me. <laughs> that is somewhat similar, although you would never compare to Fort Alessa. So I, I hope that's, that's true. But uh, I can tell you between the meal and the company and the conversation last night, uh, it was an experience that I'm sure no one on this, uh, this delegation is going to forget. Uh, I don't think uh, there has been a delegation from New York or maybe any other state uh, like this before. You have here the top-ranking federal officials from New York. You have the top city officials from New York, New York City. Uh, and you have the top state officials. So every level of government is represented here. Uh, I refer to this as the uh, New York Dream Team. Uh, and I said to the governor yesterday, only half joking, uh, these are all very important people. Uh, it's very hard to get them uh, in one place. It's even hard to get them on the telephone. Uh, and I said that uh, they are all here for Puerto Rico and for the governor, uh, because I can tell you this, they don't answer my phone call. So uh, they came together because they care so much about Puerto Rico and have such respect for this governor and what he's doing and what he's trying to do. Uh, so it's a pleasure to be with him. Many of the problems that Puerto Rico faces, New York faces, uh, states uh, all across the country face, I don't think there's anything new here. Uh, our point is what can we learn from each other? Uh, what can we work on jointly? How can we help one another? It is hard to overstate the relationship between Puerto Rico and New York. And I don't know that you appreciate it. Uh, from your perspective. First of all, we have about a million uh, Puerto Ricans in New York. More Puerto Ricans in New York than any other place on the globe except Puerto Rico. Uh, so practically, there is a very strong connection. Financially, there's a strong connection. Uh, families go back and forth. Families transfer resources. Uh, if a family can't get what they need in Puerto Rico, they are, uh, often come to New York. If they can't get it in New York, they go back to Puerto Rico. So there is a practical, functional connection uh, between our two governments that is very important. Uh, and your problems really are New York's problems. That's not just rhetoric. It's not an expression. That is a practical truth and a practical reality. Uh, also, the personal connections are very strong. New York, probably uh, as much or more than any place in the United States, is by definition a place made up of immigrants. 
there were no native New Yorkers. The only native New Yorkers were uh, Native American Indians, right? Otherwise, everybody was an immigrant. And the uh, Puerto Rican community was the first and the first large Latino community that came to New York. So you take someone as old as I am, uh, I grew up in a neighborhood with Puerto Rican community, Italian, Irish, Jewish, but it was one of the, the main groups of people who I grew up with, my friends, uh, the people who I knew. So the personal connection is very, very intense. And you put all of that together, it makes us natural partners and it makes us natural allies. And that's what today is all about. Uh, you're facing issues, we're facing issues, how can we help one another, how, how can we grow together, uh, and what lessons can we share. The general set of issues are economic issues, health care issues, uh, which are uh, issues for uh, the island, which are issues for my state, and the delegation that we have here is in a position to deal with all of them. You also have political issues, right, which is not such a surprise. Uh, I don't believe the federal government has been fair to Puerto Rico. Uh, I don't think you have gotten the attention you deserve from the federal government. I don't think you've gotten the care that you deserve. I don't think you've gotten the financial support that you deserve. And I think that is a situation that the people in America don't fully understand. Congressman Rangel said last night something very interesting, uh, that in New York they know about the Greek financial crisis, the financial crisis in Greece, more than they know about the financial crisis in Puerto Rico. And that just shows, that's evidence, of how skewed the situation is. One of the things we can do in New York is organize and make a case. Why? Because we are loud in New York. It is a personal statement, it's also a governmental statement. Uh, when New York speaks with the home of media, we get a lot of attention. And also personally, we tend to be a very verbose, loud group of people. Some of us more than others, as you will experience as this morning goes on. I myself, I'm one of the sotto voce uh, of the group. But some of the others you will see are quite unspoken. Uh, so, I don't believe we're going to be able to solve any big problems today, but I think we can listen, we can learn, and uh, we can then come up with a strategy to build from there. One of the main issues we want to focus on is Medicaid. We do know a little bit about Medicaid in New York. Medicaid was a tremendous problem for the state of New York. I became governor about four and a half years ago. We had a $10 billion deficit, the largest deficit in the history of the state. Much of that deficit was due to uh, health care costs, especially the Medicaid costs, which were growing out of sight. We did something in New York that they said couldn't be done. We brought all the participants in the Medicaid program together. We brought the hospitals, represented by Ken Rasky here today, the private hospitals, and we brought labor, uh, doctors, nurses, to the table. And we put everyone at the table and we said, here's the situation, we're going bankrupt. We can't afford to pay the Medicaid bill anymore. And we have to redesign the Medicaid program in the state. And they said to me, you're crazy. Uh, it can't be done. Medicaid is too complicated. Nobody will compromise. Lo and behold, something we call the Medicaid Redesign Team, MRT, redesigned the Medicaid program. And it's been operating for five years now. It's been a tremendous success. Uh, we have an Attorney General, Eric Schneiderman, who's here today, who focuses on just Medicaid fraud and recovers uh, hundreds of millions of dollars for the state of New York with providers who just chronically uh, overuse the program. So that's an area of specific concern that I know that we can make a difference uh, with.